Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm here to demystify some of the questions around Viz extensions and how they work. As ever, let's get stuck in. Okay, so Viz extensions have just been launched and uh, they're in beta, so they're not fully available yet. Um, what that essentially means is that in the next few weeks, maybe month or two, this will be available in the next release of Tableau, so 24.2. Um, that is typically, I think, the spring. I think spring is the first release and then um, it's the summer release. So wherever summer is for Salesforce, that's when this will be available. What I'm going to show you is how they work first and then we're going to go and answer all the questions. And I think I just have to show you how it works very quickly so you can understand how simple it is to do this. In order to do this, I've opened up the Superstore workbook down here. I've already got it open. It's open in the background, but one thing I wanted to call out is that I'm using a version of Tableau that's specifically built for Apple Silicon. That was also announced in 24.2. So this is a nice to have because you're starting to get more native capability of Apple Silicon, and it's faster than it was previously working because it was using Rosetta. So nonetheless, I've already opened the workbook. You're probably wondering, well, why can't I see it? Because I'm in the connection window. If I go to the Tableau logo here on the top left, click on it, it flips to the workbook and I'm now in here, okay? We'll go ahead and create a new sheet. And what we'll do is we'll go to the Marks pane and you'll see we have this option for Viz extensions. Now, Viz extensions are a capability to live in the Tableau exchange. This won't be the only way to add custom chart types to Tableau. I'll come to that a little later. But fundamentally, we'll go ahead and select Add Extension and it will open up this page. This will load up the visualizations that are available on the Tableau Exchange. I'll actually put a link so you can go see these on a website in the comments below so you can just go and get stuck in and see what they look like. Now, once here, you have some filters on the left-hand side. You can see the chart types built by Tableau. They will be building more. They committed to that during the conference session about this to sort of answer some questions about Tableau, handing over the keys to the domain to third-party developers to create freemium and premium stuff. That stuff is nonsense in my opinion, but nonetheless, you can see that Tableau are gonna be building extensions themselves. There'll be free versions as well uh, that are available here built by third parties. And those third parties are mentioned in each of these. So you can see here, InfoTopics, LaDataViz, uh, ActinVision, which is a bit of a play on Activision <laughs> and in some ways, not original name, but hey. Um, and so you can see these chart types sort of starting to take place. Now, these partners have been involved in helping sort of build this in the first instance. So they've been part of the beta process to really get sort of first presence on here. But there will also be a community exchange according to the conference session. So I'm not going to commit to that, but they said during the conference session that there will be a community exchange coming soon for more general community-based plugins. The difference is that these are built by Tableau partners, so they go through a separate approval process, whereas community exchange is probably going to be not held to the same sort of level or standard. So that's, again, something to watch out for. But... Nonetheless, let's carry on. I'm going to pick the Sankey chart and you'll see it opens up this page that gives us a bit of information about this specific chart type. As we scroll down, you get a description and you get some other extensions by Tableau. It's not great that these aren't chart types. These are sort of uh, what I would call accelerators. So the fact that these are showing here, when I'm here adding an extension specifically about charts is kind of misleading. These are not uh, chart types. These are templates, something else you can get on the exchange. But you get an idea of how this works. Now, if I just go back, I hit the back button. Let's go to a different extension here. Let's go to the tree diagram, which I used in my video. You'll see that uh, each sort of developer has an opportunity to showcase their extension in their own way. So there's already a bit of a difference in how these are communicated. You can see here that Tristan and Jessica have actually sort of laid out their page slightly differently to Tableau and you can see that they've got a bit of information about them, where it's hosted, I'll come to this in a minute, and again, a description. And they've just been a bit more detailed about what you can do and they've put a ton more links and they've put some social elements. They're just doing their marketing as you'd expect. But if you go to the bottom, you can now see that you can see more chart types by the same developer. So this does make more sense in this context. It just feels like the previous page sort of hasn't really been configured properly. But here, this makes total sense context. So they've got a B-Swarm, a stream graph, a network, and a radial Sankey. Um, if I go back one more, let's go look at info topics as an example, just for fairness, because I know someone will say something about that. Uh, Power KPIs, which is a, a capability built by them. If we go down and look at this, you'll see that it's also referring to theirs. So um, really contextual information. Now, this point about where it's being hosted is super important. Uh, essentially, there are two types of extensions. There are sandbox extensions and then network connected extensions. The sandbox extensions are hosted by Tableau and are therefore offline 
Uh, they live in AWS and are simply called on from Tableau when they're needed. They don't need any call out to the internet to do anything. Uh, network connected extensions call out to a specific service. And you can see here the developers are telling you where that capability is hosted. So these developers are hosting the extension and making it work. So if we go back, let's just go back to the Sankey. Let's use Tableau as an example. When we go ahead and open this, you'll see that it doesn't have that uh, capability of where it's being hosted because it's sandboxed. So that's a couple of things you have to get, get through um, and mentally and sort of just try and understand what your company policy is going to be about that. Server admins will be trying to dig into detail for that. And I think there's a lot of good questions being asked from conference. So go ahead and check out those sessions. But let's get to the meat of this. Let's actually open up the Sankey and start building this properly. So let's do this. And by the way, when I did that, nothing happened. It was very quick. It was very native. The way this has been designed is that the Viz extensions are calling standard elements of the visualization API that Tableau uses, which means everything you'd expect from visualization like actions, filters, interactivity is just going to work the way you'd expect. The developers are hooking into those APIs to bring in Tableau into their chart type. So because I've built a Sankey, uh, I've selected Sankey here, what we can do is go to Superstore. We can choose a simple one. I've done a demo of this before. If you haven't seen it already, I'll bring category. I'll put it on level. You'll see the first one appears. I'll bring product name. I'll put it on level again. And uh, it has a little bit of a think process. Uh, I, this is a beta. This is not live yet. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll maybe put subcategory on there. I think I maybe put too many items. Yeah, I put too many items and it was it was, it was, it was proving difficult to render. So <laughs> that's my mistake. That's not a product issue. Um, but you can see here, very simple. It's Sankey. It's not showing much because I've just put in two items from the same hierarchy. Let's swap in subcategory segment. There you go. It starts to come to life. And maybe we can put in region as a third element. Let's put that on level again. And you can see this is working as you'd expect. The interactivity, interactivity works just exactly as you would want. As you click on these, everything sort of uh, linking out and you start to be able to get the relationships and everything working quite nicely. It's exactly what you'd expect. So super simple. That's one extension set up. Now, one of the other things you'll notice is to format the extension, there's this new capability here and that actually opens up what is a mini browser window and you can go off and format the extension now. Uh, in this one, there's only one formatting capability so I can change the width and you can see it changing ever so slightly, but that's essentially it. Nothing sort of crazy, just very simple. Now, if we go back and we choose a different chart, let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to do this in flow. I've built a Sankey here. What I want to do is see, can I convert this to a tree diagram? So I'm going to go here, I'm going to select tree diagram. We're going to select open and you'll see that it just resets. So the work in the, the workbook contains the following network enabled extension. That's the official term, which is a web-based application that expands the capabilities of Tableau to allow this extension to run, select OK. And you can go ahead and select OK. And now you're pretty much done. Now, in doing that, I didn't change what was on the visualization. It took the dimensions that I previously had and it's ported them on here. In the previous setup, I hadn't put any dimensions or anything. It was just there. If I go back, it's not going to open up that other page. It's going to go back to the previous visualization. And you see here, we haven't got any sort of volume. So let's put sales on link and you'll see that the proportions start to change. And now we have a little bit more of a genuine reflection of what a Sankey is. And so I'm going to go back to the drop down. And in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and add an extension. Small bug there. Didn't actually add the tree diagram uh, for some bizarre reason. So let's go ahead and add it again. And you'll see that it should just change this again. Let's go ahead and hit OK. It should just change this uh, to, to reflect what's going on now. Annoyingly, it's put sales on the end uh, sort of out element. We don't want that. What we actually want it to do is put that sales on size. So maybe a little bit of work to be done on how it transfers dimensions and measures. But you can see that it's just working. And again, if I open up the formatting uh, capabilities, well, this has different formatting options because, of course, you can do a lot more. So if we go down here, select vertical, you can see you can change the design. Um, it's really, really fast. And this is, this is genuinely as fast as you can see me working. I'm not sort of pre-rendering anything. I'm just customizing this, making it work exactly how I want. Um, and you can change sort of a lot of detail here. I'm really impressed with the level of uh, detail developers have put into some of these because these don't have to be sort of standard options, but the fact they've put them in means they 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 use Tableau. They know what people are going to want to do with this. So I can create something really impactful here and, uh, you know, just, 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 just be on with it. So there we go. We've got a chart now. 
How does this interact with Show Me? Yes, you guessed it. I hate Show Me. I've made a video about how you shouldn't use Show Me. But for those who use Show Me, you probably want to know, well, can this just transfer to another chart type? So let's go to Show Me here on the right hand side. Select Show Me and let's see, oh, what happens if I make this a tree map? Well, Tableau translates all of that and it just works. Now, annoyingly, Show Me doesn't have any of those visit extensions, so you can't sort of simulate the other way around where you can go from uh, this tree map to another chart very easily. But you can just go back and again, it remembers all those settings and where things were and you can just go back to your chart. So really full capability of what you can do. Now, if I go to a dashboard, let's go over to my overview because this is probably the easiest one. I'm going to say I don't like this chart here. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to uh, delete the worksheet because I don't want it. And we're going to bring in sheets. Uh, which, which one? Which sheet was that? Was that sheet 17? Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a caching issue. You can see this diagram is not updating. So if we just go ahead and bring that here at the bottom, we'll see that sheet 17 does come in and it's a really awful sort of spacing problem. So let me just fix this. Let's just get this sort of working. And yeah, this is where sort of layout is sort of just so frustrating in Tableau because... Oh God, I'm gonna have to fight with layout containers here. Why is this not working as I expected? Um, it because someone has set this container to distribute evenly and it's hiding behind show me. So let's go ahead, unconnect that. And now I can do this. You see, you just, you just have to, layout containers catch even people who've been using this product for a decade out. It's just so frustrating. So here's our chart. Now you can see this is all working. It, it would be nice to be able to format this here because if you format it in the other page, it's not as ideal. Whereas here, I'd love to be able to just open up the formatting option. So in order to solve this, what you have to do is go out here. And what we'll do is we'll change the nodes, we'll change the size, we'll change the smallest one right down, and then we'll do this. So it's a little bit more spacious. Um, notice I don't have any controls uh, to, 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 to sort of control how labels overlap. So you can show them all or hide them all, but you can't do sort of the middle one. So that's sort of frustrating. So um, I think, I don't know if that's a Tableau thing or a developer thing, but it would be good to have that thing where if you have too many labels, it automatically hides them. That would be a really nice addition. So if I leave them all on and we go back to our overview, you can see that it's kind of worked, but it's not It's not sort of perfect. So you do have to sort of play around with these quite a bit and just make sure you're customizing them. But fundamentally, it's a really good capability of Tableau. Now, I've shown you this. Um, the worst thing you probably want to see is, is this filtering. So if I go ahead and do this, yes, absolutely. It just works. It just works exactly as you expect. You don't have to do anything funny or anything. No hacks, basically. Um, that was really funny in the session that they called out my thumbnail to the video that I did about hacks and how much I hate them. This is exactly the kind of thing I love because it's going to kill all those hacks and give people a structured way to actually use custom chart types. So um, that is in a nutshell how this works. Very, very simple. I cannot... Uh, I couldn't make a video long enough going through all the different extension types. You can see it's actually added it here now. And there's a lot, there's a ton more you could do. Um, if I go ahead and look at this, it's it, it's sorting them in a very bizarre order. I think it's just in order of how they appeared. So you can do a ton of different types of chart types, a ton of different chart type of um, sort of capabilities that get enabled. It seems there's only probably three developers here really sort of pushing it. So Act Vision, La Data Viz, and InvoTopics are really the only developers that have sort of pulled through with this. And they're the developers maybe that have actually sort of been part of this wave before. Some of these have had these capabilities built outside of Tableau before. So it's uh, super cool to see them doing it this way and uh, expressing how it works. Now, there is a way to access local viz extensions. So these are extensions that you can literally get as a file and put on your machine to run a very bespoke chart type just locally on your laptop. So this could be a good way of testing a capability before you deploy it across the company, but it also the way a developer can test their custom chart type. So if you're building visualization and you maybe want a very sort of specific way of telling a story, you can actually build your own chart type and make that work. And so this is a great way to sort of lead into the next topic, which is to talk about the different types of people that might want to build this. Obviously, Tableau themselves will build extensions. You'll have third parties building extensions. That's very standard. And the final one is really community developers. So people building uh, extensions for themselves, maybe within a business setting or maybe within uh, the general community settings and just making them freely available. The thing I'm concerned about is I don't want to see 15 versions of a Sankey chart in here. I don't want to see 20 versions of a tree diagram as an example. What I really want is chart types that genuinely have meaningful differences so I can make an informed choice about how that works and have that choice be easy to make. 
it's very hard to sort of click into all of these and, and kind of get that context immediately. So that's something I think they still have to improve. If I have to read this, that's not great. What typically app stores have is a rating system and a way to sort of rank the good ones so that if you search for something and then you find a rating that's high and good, trusted by lots of different people, maybe even see which companies and enterprise uh, organizations are using that. That's a really good way of valid validating the good ones. And it reduces the incentive for people to use this as a way of, you know, getting exposure quickly or sort of gaming it as a marketing system, which I'm I'm sure will happen, right? That's sort of inevitable. So um it's super interesting to see this sort of come about. It's good to see this. Now, there's a ton of questions that have uh, been asked about this, and there's no possible way I could summarize them all in this video. What I will say is that most of them are actually covered in the conference session that's now available on Salesforce Plus about Viz extensions. So I would say go check that session out. Literally, it's only 30 minutes. And honestly, there's probably only 15 minutes of it that you have to really sort of drill into. And it's the bit at the end where they talk about how they've built these, how they're different, and how they work. And I think that's super important. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I didn't sort of want to make sort of a big fanfare about this because it's not fully available yet. When it goes live, I'll make a video about the chart types I really like, but I just wanted to sort of give you an early preview of what is coming in terms of Viz extensions. And I think a lot of the thinking we're talking about here and a lot of the things we're saying, You'll need to spend time now really thinking about them in your enterprise context to understand what are we going to allow, what are we going to use, and are there third parties that we actually want to work with that we prefer that can help us build something bespoke. And lastly, I think from a creative perspective, if you're building a visualization that's going to have high exposure and high impact, it really does make sense to consider getting a third party developer to help you build something bespoke if the impact and reach justifies the need, right? So... Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.